It all started with a mistake, a single catastrophic error in a sea of calculations. We were pushing the boundaries of quantum mechanics, hoping to glimpse the fabric of reality. When we activated the device, I was certain we'd made history. Instead, we shattered reality. The first time it happened, I thought I was losing my mind. I saw a fracture, a tiny crack in the corner of my vision. Through it, a twisted version of my lab appeared, filled with shadows and dark, distorted figures. I blinked, and it was gone. I tried to dismiss it, to chalk it up to fatigue or stress, but the cracks kept appearing, more frequent and more vivid. Each night they grew wider, and I saw more of those alternate worlds. Worlds where I was a monster, consumed by darkness. The worst part was that they saw me too. The fractures weren't just visions, they were portals. I could feel myself being drawn into them, slipping into those parallel realities. Each time the transition left me more exhausted, more paranoid. I started seeing the faces of my darker selves, lurking just out of sight, waiting for their chance to step through. The nights became battles against sleep, a desperate struggle to stay anchored in my own world. But I knew it was only a matter of time before one of them succeeded. They were stronger, more ruthless, and they wanted my life. They wanted my world. The rift had to be repaired. I had to find a way to close it, to seal those cracks before they became gaping chasms. The fear of what lay on the other side drove me, but so did the knowledge that it was my responsibility. I had torn the veil. Now I had to mend it. The lab became my prison and my sanctuary. I pored over equations and theories, searching for a solution. The faces in the cracks mocked me, their eyes filled with a hatred that mirrored my own fear. As the nights grew longer, I could feel the boundary weakening. My darker counterparts were closing in, their world bleeding into mine. There was no room for error, no margin for failure. Every decision, every action had to be precise. The rift was a wound, and I was the only one who could stitch it closed. If I failed, those monstrous versions of myself would flood through, and my world would be lost. The next day, I sat in the lab, surrounded by notes and equations. My hands trembled as I held the pen, scribbling furiously to find the solution. Sleep-deprived and on edge, every noise seemed amplified, every shadow more sinister. I glanced at the corner where the first fracture appeared. It was still there. I had to focus, had to find the right calculations to reverse this. My mind raced through the variables, the constants, the equations that once made sense but now felt like a labyrinth. Hey, Dr. Harris! A voice called from behind. I turned to see Adam, one of the younger researchers, standing awkwardly at the door. His eyes darted to the crack, then back to me. You all right? You look... off. I'm fine, I snapped, more harshly than intended. Just... working on something critical. Adam shifted uneasily, scratching his neck. Yeah, I get that, but, um, we've noticed you've been... well, different. Maybe you should take a break. A break? I repeated, my voice dripping with sarcasm. There's no time for breaks, not when reality itself is... I stopped myself. I couldn't let him know how bad it was. Not when we're so close to a breakthrough. He didn't look convinced, but he nodded, mumbling something about being here if I needed help. I watched him leave, feeling a pang of guilt. He didn't deserve my anger, but the pressure was crushing. I couldn't let anyone else get involved. It was too dangerous. The day dragged on. I pored over the data, my eyes burning from strain. Each time I thought I found a solution, it slipped through my fingers like sand. The fractures grew more persistent, the alternate realities more vivid. I saw versions of myself performing unspeakable acts, each more horrifying than the last. The worst was the one who relished the chaos, his face a twisted mask of glee. Night fell, and with it, the boundaries between worlds weakened. I could feel the pull, like a tide dragging me under. My body ached, muscles twitching from the strain, 
I tried to stay awake, but exhaustion was a cruel enemy. I must have dozed off because I woke with a start to find myself in another version of my lab. The alternate me stood there. He grinned, showing teeth too sharp, too predatory. Welcome, brother, he hissed, stepping closer. You can't fight it forever. Sooner or later you'll slip and I'll take your place. I stumbled back, heart pounding. No, I whispered, voice shaking. I won't let you. He laughed. You don't have a choice. This is inevitable. With a surge of adrenaline, I lunged at him, trying to force him back through the crack. His hands were cold, vice-like, as they grappled with mine. The lab around us became unstable, reality warping and bending under the strain. You're weak, he spat, throwing me to the ground. You're not strong enough to stop this. I struggled to my feet, every part of me screaming in pain. I will find a way. I will fix this. He smirked, fading back into the shadows. We'll see, Dr. Harris. We'll see. I woke up on the lab floor, drenched in sweat. I had to keep going, had to find a way to seal the rift, but the darkness was closing in and time was running out. I dragged myself to the desk, ignoring the aches and the burning in my eyes. The equations swam before me, but I forced myself to focus. I couldn't let them win. I couldn't let them take my world. The next morning, I woke with my face pressed against the lab desk, the imprint of a notebook etched into my cheek. I stretched, my muscles protesting with sharp, stabbing pains. My eyes burned from the strain of endless calculations and restless sleep. I couldn't let myself fall apart now. Adam knocked on the doorframe again. This time, he didn't wait for my response before stepping in. Dr. Harris, seriously, you need to take a break. You look like hell. I glared at him. There's no time for breaks. I'm close, Adam. I can feel it. He hesitated, then held up a cup of coffee. At least drink this. You're no good to anyone if you collapse. I took the cup, my hands shaking so badly some of the coffee spilled. I downed it in one gulp, the bitterness snapping me back to the present. Thanks, I muttered, not meeting his eyes. What's going on, really? Adam asked, his voice softer now. You've been acting... strange. The team is worried. I sighed, the weight of the truth pressing down on me, but I couldn't tell him everything. It's the experiment, I said, choosing my words carefully. It opened a door we can't close. If I don't fix it, the consequences will be catastrophic. He studied me for a moment, then nodded. All right, just don't shut us out. We're here to help. I managed a weak smile. I'll keep that in mind. He left, and I turned back to the equations. Hours passed, each one more torturous than the last. I felt the fractures widening, the pull from the other realities growing stronger. I knew I was running out of time. Suddenly the room shifted, and I found myself in another alternate lab. This one was a charnel house, blood splattered across the walls. My alternate stood in the centre, covered in gore, a crazed look in his eyes. Welcome back, he snarled, brandishing a scalpel. Ready to give up yet? I stumbled back, nearly tripping over a dismembered limb. Never, I spat. I'll stop you. I'll stop all of you. He laughed, a manic, high-pitched sound. You can't stop what's already begun. You open the door and now you have to face the consequences. I grabbed a nearby piece of metal, brandishing it like a weapon. I'll fight you if I have to. He lunged at me, the scalpel flashing in the dim light. I swung the metal bar, connecting with his arm. He howled in pain, but it only seemed to fuel his rage. He came at me again, and we grappled, our struggle intense and brutal. I could feel his strength, his madness, the sheer force of his will. He was driven by a bloodlust I couldn't match. But I had something he didn't. A purpose. I was fighting for my world, my reality. That gave me an edge. With a surge of adrenaline, I twisted his arm, the scalpel clattering to the floor. I kicked him back, using every ounce of strength I had left. Stay back, I shouted, my voice traveling through the blood-soaked lab. He sneered, clutching his wounded arm. This isn't over, Dr. Harris. You can't win. 
Before I could respond, the room shifted again and I was back in my own lab. I collapsed to the floor, gasping for breath. I groaned as I forced myself upright, muscles screaming in protest. Each movement felt like dragging lead weights. My vision swam, but I focused on the notebook, the symbols and numbers barely making sense. It had to work. There was no other choice. The door creaked open again. This time, it was Sarah, one of the senior researchers. She didn't bother with pleasantries. Harris, what the hell are you doing to yourself? I didn't look up. Working. On what exactly? Adam said you've been acting strange. Stranger than usual. We're all worried. I could feel her eyes on me, but I kept scribbling. I told you it's the experiment. Things went wrong. I'm trying to fix it. She stepped closer, glancing at the equations. These aren't just experimental anomalies, are they? You look like you've been through hell. I stopped writing and rubbed my eyes. You have no idea. Then tell me, she pressed. We can help. Whatever it is, we're in this together. I sighed, leaning back. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Try me. I hesitated, then decided I had nothing to lose. The experiment opened a rift. I'm seeing alternate versions of myself. Darker, twisted versions. They're trying to cross over, to take my place. If I don't stop them, they'll destroy everything. She didn't laugh or call me crazy. Instead, she studied me. Then the crack in the corner. Show me. I pointed to the fracture. She leaned in, peering at it. For a moment, nothing happened. Then her eyes widened as the fracture opened, showing a glimpse of the other side. She stepped back, visibly shaken. Okay, she whispered. What do we do? The words were a lifeline. We need to find a way to seal it. I'm working on the equations, but it's slow. The boundaries weaken at night and they're getting stronger. I can feel it. Sarah nodded, her expression grim. We'll figure this out. Together. She turned to leave, but stopped at the door. Get some rest. I'll take a crack at these equations. Be careful, I warned. They know we're trying to stop them. She gave me a tight smile. We will be. I slumped in my chair, exhaustion crashing over me. I closed my eyes, willing myself to stay awake, but the pull of sleep was too strong. Darkness enveloped me, and I slipped into another twisted reality. This lab was on fire, the heat searing my skin. The alternate me stood in the middle of the flames. Welcome, brother, he taunted. Ready to burn? I grabbed a metal rod, the heat scalding my palm. Not today! He lunged, and we clashed, the fire around us roaring louder. His strength was overwhelming, each strike sending shockwaves through my body. I could feel the burn, the searing pain as we fought. His laughter rang in my ears, a mockery of my efforts. With a final surge of will, I managed to knock him back into the flames. He screamed, a sound that resonated deep within me. The lab began to crumble, the fire consuming everything. I forced myself to wake, to escape the inferno. I jolted awake on the lab floor, gasping for breath. I pulled myself up, shaking off the remnants of the nightmare. The pain was real, blisters forming on my hand where I had gripped the rod. Sarah was back, poring over the equations. She looked up as I approached. Rough night? I managed a weak smile. You could say that. We're making progress, she said, her tone determined. But it's slow. We might need more help. I shook my head. No one else can know. It's too dangerous. The more people involved, the more cracks they'll find. She didn't argue. Then we keep going. We'll find a way. Sarah and I worked in tense silence, the only sounds the scratching of pens on paper and the hum of the lab equipment. Sarah and I spent the next several hours poring over the equations. The constant focus was both exhausting and invigorating. Every correct calculation felt like a victory, every misstep a brutal setback. A sudden noise jolted me from my concentration. It was the door, creaking open. Adam stood there again, eyes wide and frantic. Dr. Harris, we have a problem. I shot him a glare. What now? He stepped inside, closing the door behind him. It's Michael. He... 
He saw the crack. He's been acting weird ever since. Sarah looked up, worry evident on her face. Where is he? Adam's voice trembled. He locked himself in his office, keeps talking about the other side and them coming for him. We can't get him to open the door. I rubbed my temples, the pressure mounting. All right, let's go. We hurried to Michael's office, my heart pounding with every step. The door was indeed locked, and from inside we could hear muttering, punctuated by occasional loud thuds. Michael! I called, trying to keep my voice steady. It's Dr. Harris. Open the door. We need to talk. No! His voice was raw, filled with terror. I won't let them in. I won't let them take me. Michael, listen to me, I said, leaning against the door. I know what you saw. We're working on fixing it. But you need to open the door. We can't help you if you don't let us in. The muttering stopped. For a moment, there was silence. Then the door slowly creaked open. Michael's face appeared, pale and drenched in sweat. His eyes darted around, as if expecting an attack at any moment. Come inside, he whispered, his voice shaky. Quickly! We stepped into the cramped office, the door slamming shut behind us. Michael looked worse up close, his hands trembling, his skin clammy. He pointed to the corner, where a small crack vibrated. They're watching, he said, his voice barely a whisper. I can feel them. Every time I close my eyes, they're closer. I placed a hand on his shoulder, feeling the tremors racking his body. We're going to fix this, Michael, but you need to stay calm. Panic will only make things worse. He nodded, though his eyes remained wild. You don't understand. They showed me things. Horrible things. What things? Sarah asked gently. Michael's breath hitched. Alternate versions of us. Twisted. Evil. They want to cross over. They said... They said they'll kill everyone. I exchanged a glance with Sarah. This was worse than I thought. We need to stay strong, Michael. The fractures feed on fear and despair. We can't give them that power. He looked at me, hope in his eyes. You can stop them. Really? I squeezed his shoulder. We have to believe we can. Now stay here, stay safe. We're going back to the lab to finish our work. As we left his office, I couldn't forget the image of his haunted face. The fractures were spreading, their influence growing. The urgency of our task weighed heavier than ever. Back in the lab, Sarah and I resumed our work. The equations blurred together, a constant stream of numbers and symbols. The weight of our responsibility was immense, but it drove us forward. Hours passed. My body ached, my mind frayed, but we couldn't stop. The fate of our world depended on sealing the rift, on keeping the darkness at bay. A sudden crash from the hallway jolted us. We exchanged a look and rushed out, only to find Michael sprawled on the floor, blood seeping from his wrists. He had used a shard of glass, his eyes glazed with despair. No, I shouted, dropping to my knees beside him. Why, Michael? Why? He looked up at me, his voice a faint rasp. I couldn't take it. The voices, they were too loud. Sarah grabbed a first aid kit, desperately trying to stem the bleeding. Stay with us, Michael. Stay with us. But it was too late. His eyes closed, his breathing shallow. He was gone. I felt a rage build inside me, directed at the fractures, at the alternate versions of myself. They had taken another victim. They were winning. Sarah, I said, my voice a low growl. We have to finish this, now. Sarah and I worked through the night, driven by desperation and grief. Michael's death hung over us like a shadow. Every so often I'd glance at the corner, expecting to see another twisted version of myself. Check this, Sarah said, sliding a notebook towards me. Her hands were steady, but her eyes betrayed her exhaustion. I reviewed her calculations, my mind working through the complex equations. This could work, I muttered. If we can stabilize the quantum fluctuations, we might be able to close the fractures. Sarah nodded. We need to prepare the equipment. This has to be precise. Any mistake and... Well, you know. We got to work, gathering the necessary components. 
My hands shook as I adjusted the settings on the machine, memories of Michael's terrified eyes flashing in my mind. I couldn't let his death be in vain. Suddenly, the fractures intensified, the air around them rippling. I staggered back, clutching my head. Sarah screamed, and I turned to see an alternate version of myself emerging from the largest fracture. His eyes glowed with malevolence, a cruel smile twisting his features. Hello, Harris, he hissed, his voice a twisted version of my own. Thought you could stop us. I grabbed a metal rod, positioning myself between him and Sarah. Stay back, I warned, my voice trembling. He laughed, a sound that chilled me to the bone. You can't protect her. You can't even protect yourself. He lunged at me, and I swung the rod, connecting with his side. He grunted, but the impact only seemed to fuel his rage. He tackled me to the ground, his hands around my throat, squeezing. I gasped for air, my vision blurring. Get off him! Sarah shouted, hitting him over the head with a wrench. He snarled, releasing me to grab her. I coughed, struggling to catch my breath, and swung the rod again, striking his knee. He howled in pain, collapsing to the floor. I scrambled to my feet, grabbing Sarah's arm. We need to finish this, now! She nodded, eyes wide with fear, but unwavering. We returned to the machine, frantically making the final adjustments. The alternate me struggled to rise, hatred burning in his eyes. Activate it, I yelled. Sarah hit the switch and the machine roared to life. Agony radiated from the fractures, the alternate versions screaming in rage and pain. The dark versions yearning for freedom, their pull towards me, was almost unbearable. But the machine held. The fractures began to close, the twisted realities fading. The alternate me screamed, his form dissolving into nothingness. I collapsed to the floor, every muscle in my body aching. Sarah knelt beside me, her face pale but relieved. Did we do it? I nodded, my breath coming in ragged gasps. For now, but we need to monitor the rift, make sure it stays sealed. She helped me to my feet, and we surveyed the lab. The fractures were gone, but the cost had been high. Michael's blood still stained the floor, a stark reminder of the price we had paid. We can't let this happen again, Sarah said. We need to destroy the equipment. Ensure no one can open the rift. I agreed, but a part of me knew it wasn't over. The darkness was still there, lurking in the shadows. We got to work dismantling the equipment, but as we worked, a new fracture began to form in the corner of my vision. I didn't say anything, not wanting to alarm Sarah. The darkness wasn't gone. It was just waiting, biding its time. And when it came back, we'd be ready. Because in this world of shadows and despair, survival was the only option.